Anyways, yeah, I would say feminists, girls that like are super into OnlyFans club, like that sort of thing. And um, anyways, yeah, I would say feminists, girls that like are super into OnlyFans club, like that sort of thing. And um, whales. But Number do, do one is know, whales. Do you know why they hate you? Like, do you do you? Because I, I, my perception, like the way I feel about it, is that they hate you because you're saying stuff. There's truth to it. Mm -hmm. If there wasn't truth to what you were saying, they wouldn't hate you. They would just be like, oh, who cares? Yeah. There's truth to it. And also it makes them reflect on their own choices. So now if you're talking about how female promiscuity is not empowering mm -hmm. and they've been promiscuous and they f bought the story that that was somehow empowering, mm -hmm. they're listening to you and they're like, we got to shut her up. See, and here's the thing. A lot of times we have this narrative like, oh, they bought the story when they're young. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I don't really believe that. I think uh, deep down on an innate level, we all know. Because what's the first thing that girls call each other? <laughs> when we're mad mm -hmm. you're a hoe why are mm -hmm. you saying that if it's a good mm -hmm. thing i feel like sometimes that's a cop-out that women use well they'll be like oh i bought into da, 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 da. i'm like did you mm. did so you? you don't think that women bought the story you, then why did they do it if they didn't buy the story they just wanted no consequences and like honestly there really aren't a ton like even i mean you could you're a generation older but i asked my mom i'm like do the hoes get married too she said yeah Mm -hmm. So at, at the end of the day, there's really not a lot of consequences for any of it. See, I think they have to have bought the story to an extent because mm -hmm. there's too many of them that aren't comfortable being promiscuous. Like they'll do it, but mm -hmm. they go home, they're miserable. They cry about it. They call their friends. They're mad that that guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're mad the guy didn't call them back. They're expecting that guy to behave like a boyfriend when it was really clearly just a hookup. So mm -hmm. they're so upset about it that they're then trying to map out with their friend on the phone. Like, why doesn't he like me? Because it's like they bought the story that somehow they were going to be promiscuous and it was going to feel good and they were going to get what they wanted or something mm -hmm. beneficial for them out of that situation. And they mm -hmm. don't. They're all miserable. I, I think like there's a hesitance to point out that a lot of women who follow feminist advice, mm -hmm. they're just so unhappy. Mm -hmm. They don't reflect like they're promiscuous, but unhappy. They're on birth control, unhappy. They're climbing the corporate ladder, unhappy. Why? Why no self-reflection in the process, do you think? Um... I, I just kind of have a different view on it. I just What's think, your take? I just think they liked the party life. I just mm. think it was fun. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, okay, maybe, how many girls do you really know that are really climbing the corporate ladder? I mean, you maybe, you think you lived in New York, right? I did, yeah. Maybe you knew more of them, but a I'm lot. like, most girls I know just have average jobs. <laughs> and yeah. most girls in general have average jobs. They're not climbing anything. See, I, I know a lot of girls that are trying, that are trying to compete with men, mm -hmm. like in the cities and... I grew up with a lot of them that were See, like, I want to be the manager. I want to be the CEO. I want to be like, that's, that's a sign that I've been successful in mm -hmm, life. Mm -hmm. And they, they forewent having children for a really long time mm -hmm. in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they exist. And they're, you know, the, this is just, I'm just saying by and large, the average yeah. salary is like 35,000 yeah. a year for women. So like by and large, it, women aren't climbing the corporate ladder. Uh, uh, like there are some, right? Maybe like 10, 15%, but mm -hmm. I would say like, by and large, it's more just like it was fun. So they I just want to have fun. Yeah. You, I so think... you, you, you believe that women, modern women, are deriving enjoyment from that pro-promiscuity structure. They're, they're, you believe they're not unhappy at that No, core? I think they're unhappy, like, how do I put it? When the, the consequences happen. Mm -hmm. So, like, when they sleep with a bunch of people and then, like, everyone finds out. And they're like, oh, shit, you know, now. But do I think, like to start yeah they're having fun mm. and then you know life catches up to you it's kind of like you eat 10 cheeseburgers every time you eat the cheeseburger it's fun you're happy but then you're 300 pounds rebecca <laughs> yeah um so that's that's how i see it yeah see i don't think they're having fun mm -hmm. i think they're programmed little robots mm -hmm. i think they're m largely miserable and i think they they were they can't change because they don't they, they've been told that that's what they should be doing mm -hmm. it's crazy though you look at like college girls coming out today mm -hmm. some of these body counts how you come out of college with 15 20 people <sighs> You're telling me. I mean, did you study, girlfriend? Did you do what did you do? <laughs> like, I don't understand where that kind of time comes from. Honestly. Oh my god. No. Oh my gosh. The girl on my show, the one who I was like, okay, this is. I'm gonna tell you this story. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. She may give the names away look too. It, look, <laughs> it, look it. Look it. Look it. Amy. And and she comes on my show, and she's she. Okay, I did. We we're talking a show about body count, right? How uh -huh. many bodies? Too many body. It, questions like that. I don't usually. The only time I ask people their body count is when I say is body count important and they say no and then I say then what's your body count but the point mm -hmm. isn't to get their body count the point is to show it's important mm -hmm. right because right. otherwise everyone would just be like this you know so um on this show to, as a joke I was like what's you guys' body count and I said ha ha you don't have to say it's okay like I was kidding she's all this pro-sex girl so she's like oh I'll say it to get rid of the stigma are you sure 
She says, yes. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. This girl threatens to sue me because she said her body count on live. That's her, ridiculous. Why did you say it? So litigious people. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sex positive. That's yeah. another. That's a word that just popped into my head. I don't. Do you watch any of this? Like the Bachelorette or any of that stuff. You watch any of those shows? Oh my gosh, they used to. My team used to watch it in college, but I would get so bored, and okay. then I would just give my opinion. Like, no, imagine watching the Bachelorette with me giving my opinions on things. I got. I would watch that. I'm they, not gonna lie. They stopped inviting me. <laughs> I said they're like, they're like pros. Like we don't care. We like if you think it's stupid. <laughs> um, but I actually I started watching the recaps, and I liked those better. There's like yeah. so this. Is, a channel called Bachelor Fan Takes. So sometimes I'll watch the recaps of seasons. So it's interesting to watch because if you, especially if you're in this area and you're doing this kind of content, it's interesting to watch. First of all, if you go to older episodes, you can see like how much male female dynamics have changed, even in terms of what's presented to the public in the last like 15 years. Mm-hmm. Much more traditional. Like if you looked at, you know, the, some of the first episodes versus what you see now. But there was a girl on it recently, a couple of seasons ago, and she was sex positive. She actually showed up. And the first thing that she did was pull out a Kate, dildo. Katie Thurston. Katie Thurston. I remember, and she yeah. was like, and, and these women are like kind of horrified that guys would care about body count. Like the guys get to the end and they say like, hey, you're sleeping with a bunch of girls. I, I can't do this. Like you're already, you're, you're supposed to be in love with me. And the girls are like, oh, this is outrageous. And the audience loves what the girls are saying. They love it because they're like, yeah, girl power. In the meantime, I'm sitting there like, if he really loves you and you're saying you love him, you shouldn't be able to go into the next room and sleep with somebody else, honey. Something's broken inside oh my, you. Oh, my. Oh, you're talking about Hannah Brown or whatever? Oh, yes. When she slept with the... Yeah, I'm like, what guy wants to marry? Producer. <laughs> you want to marry a girl that's proposed to a girl that slept with another dude three days before? Three days before. Would you sign up for that? Deli, you going down the aisle or... No. 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 Like, leave me out of this. But, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, how do you even, how do you, I mean, I don't understand what's so broken. See, what bothers me is I feel like there's something broken in women because, and I keep going back to like, it's not natural for us to behave this way. I don't feel like it's natural for women to behave this way. And like, what is broken that you can't even understand now that a guy cares that three days ago you were sleeping with someone else and now you're in his bed? That's nasty. Yeah. I, I do feel like hypergamy is natural. Like women like like monkey branching and dating up. That's been, I went to an art museum mm. and there was paintings of girls being hypergamous. <laughs> You get a red pill lens on an on a museum wall. Yeah, Uh, yeah. Allie took me. She took me to a museum, and she was showing me. I'm like, oh my gosh, these girls have always been the same. As many of you know, I was just banned on TikTok, and we are demonetized on a daily basis on this platform. If you want to help, please consider sending a super thanks below. Every donation helps, and it helps make what we do possible.